Other than Tom, who's our liaison, so no public comment. I guess we'll move right on to the voting minutes. Mary's mm -hmm. doing that for us. Yeah. Meeting, we have a presentation by Ryan Zimbabwe of our 2022 audit, and because it had just arrived in our meeting, we opted to give everybody some time to take all of the materials home with them. Now, does anybody have any questions about that? I will entertain a motion to approve the 2022 audit. Mary, second, Katie. Any more discussion about the audit? Any questions? If not, uh, all those in favor of approving the 2022 audit? Any opposed? It, it passes. Katie, I turn it over to you. All right. So, Unfortunately, the report wasn't completed until yesterday. There were some issues with the transition into QuickBooks. There were some complications, but um, in at the end of the day, everything worked out totally fine. Um, were you able to print copies for people of the yes. report? Um, so it's a different report than we got in the packet? Well, I wrote a so your report. report. Yes. Yes, so I have a report that just highlights some of the items that you'll already see. But again, I wasn't able to get at that until yesterday because of some issues that were happening. So I'll just go over it verbally. And if I left them in there, so I know. Okay, um, pass them around. Okay, so I'll just go over it and then Jill did make copies so she can um, distribute those after. Um, so the things that you're going to speak of are in the written. Report. It's all in the written report. The one that she's, that she's giving you. Okay. Yes. The one yes. that's in the board packet that you have are all the financials that she's going to talk about, but she has the written the treasures. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So the report is from March 14th to April 14th. The library is in good financial standing. The total bank amounts are 9.68 percent above our 2022 total for the board designated cash operating and reserve capital accounts. Um, that was the main total assets are 10.85 percent higher than 2022, 28.5 percent of the year is complete, and most of the budget line items reflect this percentage. A few outliers, um, technology and communications is at 45.7 percent of our budget, human resources staff development is at 47.8 percent of our budget. And the workers' comp, which I mentioned in prior meetings, remains the same and at that higher rate, but that's not a problem. Um, I do have a list of the expenses over $1,000 in the warrant. 
nothing out of the ordinary. Um, books and materials, Brian's and Grimoglia, the final payment for the audit, uh, electronic databases, public computer security software, backflow preventer, design services, spring newsletter, medical insurance, toner for uh, Northeast toner for copier needs, overdrive, lawn care for the salting and plowing, and then our Upper Hudson second quarter fees. Um, and the off warrant, again, insurance, national grid, Nicelers for retirement, two payrolls, deferred comp, and four new Chromebooks and their licenses that have um, as far as budget committee, all the board members have agreed to join. Lynn, Jill, and I had our first preliminary meeting. And a couple of the things that we talked about were the contribution that we'll be making to health insurance. That was something that was part of a preliminary conversation because we need to kind of determine are we changing that and how will that impact everything. And then the other was. Um, the recommendations from the building, what's the word? I just start the building decision study. Thank you. <laughs> and um, again, we're saying the dates that we'll meet. That's all going to be there, same as last time, nothing changed. And then just the motions to set the off warrant, the warrant. And so if you want to wait, I don't know if people would be more comfortable to wait until they get to visually see what my report says, or if you're comfortable because you have the other notes. Yeah, because we saw all of the documentation. I'll just use that just a few minutes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions? Sure. Um, when will the transfer from reserves? Is this transfer from reserves the overdrive or no. is this the budgeted amount? That's the budgeted amount. Okay. So we have to do yes. It's a transfer. Yeah. Okay. And we also have not done the transfer from last year yet. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yes. The transfer from last year. No, it's not it has not been made yet. So when does that get done? It gets done when we are able to talk about it and then we'll um, present it to admin. But it needs to be done before the end. Typically, it's done around this time after we have all of our. Okay, so it's so it's just for it's the time. It's time. So we will go to the time. We have a lot of late. Did see that the admin is not on the typical meeting date. I will not be able to attend that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if enough people will be affected that it's worth changing or if just, I mean, I'm comfortable, obviously, replicating without me. I just will not be able to meet that. So entertain anyone who wishes to make motions on the treasure support. Yeah. Make which one? The board to accept the own board. And then Mary seconded. You want to say a few rounds out loud? Just for yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Um, the off warrant 108,474 and 74 cents for the period of March 18th. 14th. On the agenda, it's March 14th. Oh, I put March 14th because my lab, that was the thing that we. I had that, that about. Yes. consideration last time, and Jill explained it. So, cover it. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more discussion about the off warrant? Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Passes. Unanimous. Okay. I will accept a motion to authorize the president to sign the warrant. Dated April 14th, 2023, in the amount of $45,477.97. That motion, Mary, 
Second, Amy, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? No. Unanimous. Okay, I will entertain a motion to approve the financials with 28% of the year completed. That's presented. Charlie? Oh, so it's either one second. No, but Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Pass it to Nanos. Any reports? Charlie? Yeah. So for admin, we met on the third uh, for major topics. Some mm -hmm. building updates, the backflow preventer, an update on the building condition survey, and we talked about the exterior signage. Uh, and then health insurance, we kind of chatted through um, the history of the increases for the contribution for uh, the library makes for staff costs. So we worked through that. Um, and then there's a, uh, a document that kind of lays everything out in minutes, and um, there's a board motion on that. And then uh, for personnel, uh, Jill gave us some updates uh, for filling some, several positions. And then we did a, a, a update on the SCODAC funding discussion. Um, so there's a, um, going to be a committee to have the reps from both towns to help make a plan for the 2025 budget year. Um, we're going to do that over the summer. So forward motion. The corresponding health insurance proposal document, which is the next document here. So you're making a motion, um, Charlie, that says increase the library's health insurance monthly contribution rate $875. That would be for a single. $975 would be a single plus so uh, plus spouse. And employee plus spouse. Twelve hundred is employee plus children or family. Beginning in July. Okay. Question? I just want to make it clear. It says it, but I wanted to just keep everybody's mind straight about it because there are really two components of the health insurance increase. So this we typically do every three years. This is I think got pushed one year back further because of last year's uh, salary compensation mm -hmm. study. So this is a proposal to increase the amount the library contributes. The employees make whatever choice they want about what, how to apply it to a plan. The second piece is being referred to the budget committee as something to consider for the 2024 budget. So it's not being discussed today, but it will. Um, it, the budget committee is being encouraged to ask fund a buyout option for staff who don't choose to have health insurance, right? For staff, full-time eligible for health insurance can pop out, but they are not getting any buyout compensation. So that's been referred to by the committee and will be considered there. So this is just for the um, increase in the rate. Yes. So that's going to the budget committee, not the admin. Correct. It's going to the budget committee. And that is what the minutes. The discussion about this. And to all of those in favor of increasing the health insurance. Okay, unanimously passes. Thanks a lot. Anything else to talk about this? Was this before this question? No. Okay, then service committee services. Um, so again, for it is self explanatory. Um, basically focused on policies um, that need to be initiated. In so that we can pursue suicide and security. Oh, um, the 
insurance or the sorry cybersecurity policies, we need to um, initiate so that the library will be able to pursue security, uh, cybersecurity insurance. Um, so that's basically what our focus was on the policies uh, in your packet. Um, we are recommending as a committee that um, we're approving these policies for implementation. Want to do them separate, Jill? Because one is one goes in as a. So you'll you have uh, page 24 is the information security policy. So that's a policy that will need for approval. And then on page 27, staff IT guidelines, that is something that requires board approval. It's not a policy, but it does get put, it will get put, put into our staff. And the other document was sent around to the committee and, you know, some input was um, provided by the services committee, but that does not require board approval. It's an internal document. So we're just, the report should suffice for that. And so one of the things we did talk about was a tip point. The hope is in the future that we will get the staff manual in a whole, as a whole um, to look at. at least to approve it. Um, but this one had to come piecemeal just because we need to get this policy in place. Okay, so, okay, so does the motion come for, so the first motion to approve the implementation of the April 3rd, 2023 information security policy as presented comes from the committee. Yes. A second. Farley. Discussion about that information security policy. Well, as to the personnel uh, present in the memo, that will be clear, but we will have a discussion. If not, I'll entertain a vote. All those in favor of the policy, unanimous approval. Next motion to approve implementation of the April 3rd, 2023 staff ID guidelines. Not the policy doesn't mean the policy. Uh, as presented, comes from committee. Second on that. Anybody? Amy? Any discussion about the um, staff ID guidelines? Has it been shared with staff? Will it be shared during the 20th meeting next Monday? The staff, yeah, staff, staff development day will have a moment where there will be a training. The rules of security. Any discussion, questions? A vote. All those in favor of approving the implementation of these guidelines? It's unanimous. Michael is on the call today. Um, I won't go at record speed. All yours. Plenty of time. All right, we'll piggyback in on staff development day. We have a busy week coming up. It's we have our staff development day on Monday. Book sale prep starts tomorrow, I think. We've got book sale coming up, and we have all of our strategic planning meetings. So busy week for everyone. Staff development day topics, we uh, will be covering uh, our IT security, all of the policies that we just talked about, the procedure, staff internal documents. We will have, that's gonna be facilitated by Perry, our current head of digital services. We, there will be a component facilitated by me on book challenges, something that we talked about here, and uh, just another training for staff, for, for all staff. Uh, just librarians. Trivia, this is a more fun component, and that will be facilitated by Jody and Selena. And Molly will, will have a Plinko fun game during lunch with prizes for that. And then, of course, we have the staff SOAR assessment by our consultants. Maxine and Erica will do 
the strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results uh, focus group with staff that day. So a busy day for staff. And that will be in the building. That will be in the building, in the main part of the library, and in the multi-purpose room. We'll be moving back and forth between them. There's also a component part of the day um, where there are staff meetings and department meetings. Well, there's an hour for department. So it's a busy day. We've got a great day planned. Thank you for giving us this day for staff. We were able to fit a lot in, and I hope it's really time for our strategic planning. Somehow it found it, it, you know, that was the one thing that turned out wonderfully. Yeah. Yeah. It fits right in with our staff, <laughs> staff <laughs> development day. So you gotta look at the positives. And we're okay with the book sale. Anything out that room on Sunday? Before. Well, we've gone back and forth on several different things. So I think the last thing we're doing is leaving these types of tables to place there. And, and if, if needed, we can, you know, adjust and arrange it with staff. So I think we're leaving around we the need equipment. The equipment. We need the, equipment, the AV equipment now for the uh, I think presentation. Yeah. Okay. So do you need us, you know, at one point, some of us volunteer to come in Monday to get... No, we'll have everything done Sunday. I time to walk out here Sunday morning. Okay, going right over. Early. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate all of all of your flexibility. Everybody working together to do this. There's a lot of logistics involved. Still a lot of logistics involved. The community forum will be Sunday uh, from two to three in the community room at the YMCA. If I think you are going to help, thank you with uh, sort of a cleanup. It's going to be you and I. There's no other staff there. So if anybody else wants to join, feel free to join us. Um, please invite anyone and everyone. This is nobody had to RSVP, so we have no idea. Is this going to be five people? Is this going to be fifty people? So maybe you want to say Sunday at the book sale. I, I would encourage people to attend the community forum. Mm -hmm. If you want us to have a spiel or anything like that, I, you two can just talk that we're undergoing our five-year strategic planning process, and this is a great way to hear from the community. We want to hear. You know all about how do you what what do you um how are you using the library and uh what are your thoughts on the community i don't know the exact questions that they're going to ask this is the consultant do you do not want children there i'm just thinking sunday's kind of a zoo here um, i think it's up to the parent if they think their children can sit through a one hour community forum so it's you know a q a some kids can do it some kids can't it's up no to the parent parent. Here, but ironically there is john here at the if they're a wine member they probably if there's a wine member, wine member. <laughs> i don't think we should put them out there i don't know they have it at that time yes they may not i would say no child i would just make sure they know no yeah okay and then and do they not need to be um a patron or a resident of East Greenwich, I guess, to go to the community. No, anybody that is has an interest in the East Greenwich community library is invited to go to the community forum. Can we sign it, John, like the the payment table? Because I'm just thinking if people are waiting to pay or the pay, you might see it there. Right. Is there there's a sign right on this? Yeah, the sign on the, the door, but maybe we can put the similar sign. Yeah. yeah. Talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Talk about that. So there's a sign outside. You see this sign right here yeah. on the meeting room? Yeah. So, so we can talk about that, but if you want something, I'm sure Susan can have something. Okay, the rest of the schedules. The, so uh, Maxine and Eric will be here for three days. They'll be here Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, we are paying for their hotels. So you'll get a bill for that um, next month's bill. It's on the America card. We have a seventh grade focus group that they will be facilitating at Goff Middle School on Monday. So their, their day on Monday and, and my day will be staff development day here. Then they will go to the seventh grade focus group. And then that night will be the first meeting of the Community Advisory Council. And that's here at the library in the multi-purpose room. Now, that Community Advisory Council meeting is where um, they will review, the, the consultants will review the survey results. There were over 700 community surveys, so we met our goal for community surveys, and 
um, just over 100 youth surveys. So we, we had a great response rate. Right? And so then we'll review the results of, of the surveys and the key informant interviews that they um, conducted. They conducted 10 key informant interviews. And the Community Advisory Council will be charged that night with developing a community vision based on the identified aspirations, challenges, and changes needed. So there will be, the focus groups will provide input for the next stage of everything. So on Tuesday morning, so that's a full day from the morning till night, on Tuesday morning will be the business leaders focus group and that will be here at 8.30 to 9.30, please, this is a, another focus group that we don't have a lot of people signed up for. So if you know anybody who is, owns business, works at a business, can represent a business in the community, please invite them to come. It's not too late. It should be a robust conversation for whoever's there. One hour, easy. Would you include somebody who's a consultant? Sure, he has a consulting business. It could be any anybody, anybody who has, does business in town, has a business, works in a business in town, represents a business. Tuesday from four o'clock to five o'clock will be the community and faith based organization focus group. During the day, the consultants will be interviewing staff and walking around and observing and, and really identifying what's happening in the library. And that'll be um, Tuesday, obviously, because it's Monday, it's staff going. Business leaders focus group, uh, community and faith based from four to five, and then right after that, from six to seven, so short window in between, we will have the parent and caregivers focus group. And we, have, we do have a pretty good group signed up for that, so that should be a great focus group. After that, so that ends at seven. The library board and friends board will be meeting at 7.30. So it's gonna be a quick transition. So I ask you guys to be patient and kind of, if you could coordinate people out here to the friends, mostly in the board to not go in until they leave. I figured I it was tricky. It was tricky to fit everything in and we figured you guys were the most flexible and understand logistics. So thank you. I appreciate your accommodating, trying to fit it all in in one day. And then the whole schedule for all the work group meetings, it's all in my director's report. So work group uh, meetings begin on May 10th. And there's a, I think, I guess I included a, a list of what each topic was for each of the six work group meetings and what the worker will be tasked with doing in between. And you want us to bring laptops to this meeting? To the no, to the board friends focus group. No, no it'll be the work group. Sorry. Oh, to so the work group meeting. It's probably a good idea if you use a laptop, a laptop, or the, the work group meetings will be working meetings. So kind of a staff. <laughs> Thank you. But there will be some work of the there's there's the work group that has board and friends representation, and then there's the staff portion of the work group. Some of the work in between will be done by the staff. So there's the six one hour meetings by everybody. And then there's also an additional couple of hours of work and, and collaboration with just staff in between those meetings too. So there's six of them now? For sure. Well, there's five, five confirmed and then a possibility of six. We have them or six if we need it. The seventh grade focus group is a great idea because I can remember when I was in seventh grade, I knew the answers to everything. So. <laughs> That's what they said. They said the seventh graders give them geniuses, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they know everything. Yeah. Sorry, it's true though. So, we're really looking forward to this strategic planning process. It is a lot in a very short window. Um, budgeting it. Budget season, we're in, we're in full budget season right now. And uh, so I'll talk a little bit about personnel in a minute while I'm in my director's report because that has shifted some of our internal priorities right now with, with staffing. 
but building conditions study, the site visits have been completed and they have given us a, some preliminary figures to include in our budget for next year. So these are preliminary figures, but these are, these are numbers that, that, they, that they think are critical for us to do right away. And that is about just shy of $176,000. So that will have a significant impact on our budgeting as well. And so we are hoping to come up with a construction grant and this will be part of the budget process this year in committee. So it's a good year for everyone to be involved. So have they given us ideas of what those things are? Yeah, we'll talk about that. I have a list of everything. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in the budget. Okay, the build, so that's the building condition study. The backflow preventer, the, the quotes came in and today actually. Um, so it's a, just shot a little bit more than $7,000. So I will be engaging them. That's under the $10,000 purchasing um, policy. So I can just move forward with that. I will be engaged. And it, it, it turns out that it's our current um, who we use now for our regular major maintenance contract. So it's great because they know our building and they know us and gave us a great quote. That's for like the parts and installation. That's the whole. And that's the whole shebang. So that that's good news because we weren't sure how, that, that that would be a much bigger lift. So we're happy with that cost, and hopefully, uh, I already gave them the go today and connected them with some folks on staff to start coordinating with. I'll be involved a little bit in that too. It will most likely require us to shut down for a day. I don't know when that will be yet because uh, they will need to turn the water off to the building. And because they have to order things that in there's you know delays and sourcing them. So I I won't know that until we get a little closer. It's something that I, I think we will need to make it will require us to make a quick decision on that because this is something that was supposed to be in place by April 15th with the town. And you know, it took a while to get everything together for this. So the town is aware and fine with us, but we, we can't keep, you know, we don't want to, if, if everything comes back in a week, we don't want to then wait another month to say we have the okay to close down. So, so does that require a I think it will require a motion and we can do that under new business that you would, would want to this that would require us just authorize me to close down the library if needed for the installation of the um, backflow preventer. But what I will try to do is work with them on doing it on the weekend, at night. I'm not sure how long they're going to need. If they can, you know, I may be able to work with them. But and also we'd love to work on a day that we don't have to rearrange and you know and cancel things that the community is reserved. And so it's going to take some coordination. You know, it, it may not be the day that they that it's delivered that we're going to do the install. We're going to try to do it mindfully, but I would like, if possible, the board to authorize me to make that decision so that we can move quickly. Um, can you remind me when do we start closing on this? We start closing on Sundays after Memorial Day. Yeah. Basically, July and August we're closed on Sundays. And June, June. Sorry. And actually, no, we'll we are we are closed after school closes. Closes. Sorry. July and August we're closed on Sundays, and it's Labor Day that we begin to seven days again. So Sundays Fourth of July is when you whatever right around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first Sunday in July, we are closed. We are still closed every Sunday in July and August, wherever it falls. I misspoke with the world. Yep. Okay. Um, 
Let me show you about a few fun things that are going on. If you look out there, the library expedition, I told you about it last month. Check out, make sure when you leave, check out the first two um, exhibit cases because we have put together the map and all kinds of, you know, what is the expedition, but on this side, you will see all the, there are um, different things that you can purchase. So there's, you know, a, a onesie for a kid, t-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of really cute stuff. And it's cute. It's really nice. So we're hoping that people will, the money goes to Upper Hudson, but it goes for things like this, really great projects. And we are hoping that people will purchase them. So we purchased some at the library that, that are in the cases to encourage other people to buy them. And they go on the site. It's in the board packet, actually, but you can find that at the library desk. Um, but we encourage everybody to do that, and then we will use them for prizes later on. I'm sorry, yeah. you can purchase it online. You purchase well. it online. You don't purchase them here. Okay. They are printed on demand. It's a company that prints on demand. So they didn't have to come up with it's a little bit higher cost because but there's, lower but, but there's there's no risk. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. it's a great way to do it. Yeah. That means they can offer more items. It's just it's a really great group. Maps are being distributed to everybody at every desk. They um, it kicked off the beginning of the month on April 3rd. And when when you when you hit library number six, 12, 24, and 36, you will get prizes. Um, and the big prizes are going to be offered at East Greenbush at, at number. Uh, sorry, visit number six and visit number 36 will be big prizes, and they will be offered just in a few libraries. So this is kind of an inventory thing. So we didn't have to spread them everywhere. So we are one of the libraries, East Greenbush, Bethlehem, Brunswick, Troy, and Colony. So plan, be sure to plan visits number six or 36 for one of those libraries. And the map that's in your board packet, it's on page 34 of your board packet. It's real. It's a. I I put this in here because this was not actually. This was actually not created by anybody at Upper Hudson or any of our staff. This was created by a patron at another library who just loved going on the expedition. So they created this map, and it's really great. They used our our they have permission to use the logos and everything, and so now this map is available. That we're distributing and gave us permission to distribute those maps as well with our members. It's a really great program. People are getting really excited about it. Uh, one of the libraries is using this opportunity for their staff development day to rent a bus and they're going to try to go around. To, I mean, they won't hit all 36, but they're going to try to go around to different libraries, which is really great if we were doing strategic planning. We'd probably do something like that too because I think it's just such a great idea. Yeah. But we're really excited, and, and Molly was on the planning committee representing the East Greenwich Library. Not all libraries, but the planning committee, but she did a great job. So shout out um, to Molly for her last big project. Okay. Where's Molly going? I will talk about that in a minute. Yes. All sad, happy for sad. Okay, so actually, let me talk. Uh, let's let's segue into staffing. Let's talk about staffing. You know, you know that we have at the bottom of every personnel memo, we have had these positions that have been open since since COVID. That you know, we said when we extend our hours, we're gonna when we extend our hours or when you know. We need more people here because of what's happening in the library. We will fill these library clerk positions. These are library clerk positions. So those positions are open. We have just gotten ready to press post on a library clerk position. And then we had two um, resignations. And it's a wonderful, I, it's, it's a, Boy, that was a tough week. You know, one telling me, oh, this is coming up, but it's not for sure yet, so we can't tell anybody. And the other one telling me, this is coming, 
So for a week, I knew that we were going to have this, but nobody else knew, including each other. And it was terrible. So we have two department heads, long time, um, long, long time staff here for 20 years. Karen's been here 17 years and Molly's been here 20 years. Molly is leaving to move. She's been trying to move to Rochester. So this is a really good thing for her. We're happy for her. It's where her family is, her, her aging parents. It's a wonderful opportunity for kids and every, that's a great opportunity for Molly. So she will be leaving to go to Rochester and Carrie is leaving to go over the river. So she's leaving to go to Colony and she will be, um, her position will kind of shift here. She's doing a lot of IT and there she will be doing a lot of librarian work. And that when she started here, 17 years ago, she was a librarian. And she has self-taught herself all of the IT here. So we don't have an IT staff. We've been very lucky for like 17 years to not have had the cost really. And she saved us a lot of money over the years. We have, we do have an outside IT company that we currently consult with. Um, that's called Acu Networks. You sign those bills. They bill us every so often. We did, we had started transitioning to them already because we, for the past, for the last 10 years or so, it was as on an as needed basis. So anytime Carrie couldn't figure something out, we would call them. So they've known our IT infrastructure for a long time. For this year, we engaged them on a monthly basis, knowing that we would need a set number of hours. Things are getting more complicated. So we knew we needed that, and we also knew we probably needed to transition into a more encompassing IT company. Because the IT company that we work with now, he's great, but he's a one guy, and has you know his business is taken off, which means he can give us. We're sort of like a, he, we're a crumb, and he gives us a great deal, and it's kind of community service for him. So we we. <laughs> We knew that we were going to need to transition to a larger company, but because everything's been piecemealed together over the years, it's going to be a transition to move to an outside company. So we have, we are all few works though. That's this other person. This is forty man band. That's Acunorx. Oh, that is that's Acunorx. So what we will be doing is transitioning. Um, Acunetworks will assist us. We'll work with them to begin with during this initial transition, but they will assist us in in pro helping procure another outside IT company, which we actually have a few ideas because we've been working with some more. Carrie's been working with some other IT companies on all of the cybersecurity stuff, trying to figure it all out because we needed that expertise. And so there have been a number of companies that she's talked to that have just done pro bono work. So so we've kind of set the stage to, to work well with some outside companies. It will, it will be a transition though, and I was, I'm was i sad that Carrie will be leaving us through that transition, but I'm happy for her. So it was an anticipated transition just? That was an anticipated transition. Now the huge loss to us is that we have somebody who over the last 17 years has learned everything that is not, you're not going to find that in another librarian. There are no other librarians who do that. It's a not, a, it's kind of a made up job. <laughs> so we have over the past, um, you know, because over the past week, well, it's Thursday until today, we have just worked really hard to figure out what comes next. I mean, this is a, this is, not a typical transition when someone leaves because we have all these other jobs open at the same time. And then two of our key department heads leave at the same time. So it's approximately $200,000 worth of staffing money that you talk about what are you doing and how do you best use that money. And so we have, you know, we were, we knew we were going to need to make some organizational changes, probably with a strategic plan, but it's not here yet. So we've been doing this kind of rapid organizational assessment. We will be posting some positions 
Um, we will hire a head of youth services. We will hire a full-time tech librarian that will um, report out to uh, adult services for now. We think we're gonna, you know, things may shift and change, but we're gonna hire a full-time tech librarian. So what that means is it's all the work that Carrie does that's helping the public with IT stuff, training staff on things, you know, it's, it's, it's a librarian outreach kind of digital services and position. Will that be a librarian one or a librarian That'll be a librarian one position. That'll be a librarian one position. She's a two. Right? She's a librarian two. We will. Youth services would be a librarian two. So, uh, yeah. so there, there's a librarian two position that will be posted for the head of youth services. That position will stay the same. We will also be posting a part time librarian one position in adult services, a part time library clerk position. And there will be some additional shifts that'll happen internally as well. So right now, um, right now, PR is under digital services. PR is going to come to me because I'm library five. So as much as I was trying to get rid of things, it's the only place it fits. It's the only place it fits. So. Um, I assume it's going to come back, and, and so we've already worked on that. We're working on that, and on what that's going to be. Her job is shifting and changing because this admin assistant position is taking away the administrative assistant portion of her job. She will still be community relations coordinator, so she will do PR, the PR for the library. She will be the friends liaison. She will continue to be the friends liaison, and she will work with outside um, partners things and library wide things. Uh, so now yes. does she do like your social media and stuff too? Is that what you need to know? No. So Carrie, Selena, and Susan work together doing that. Selena is a library assistant and she works part-time in circulation and she did a lot of the IT updates and she worked on social media. So Carrie or Selena well, now that's a library assistant position. It's full time. We are taking her out of circulation completely, moving her to adult services at this point. We're going to move her to adult services. She will, um, she also does programming. She, she does the trivia nights. And so she's you know, kind of a jack of all trades. So we're going to put her on a public, in the public service arena. She will still be able to assist with IT updates and things like that. But she needs someone to report to. And so that's going to be adult services is going to take on those three positions. During the interim, there's going to be a lot of transition here with, with the IT outsourcing. This is not, it's going to be, a, we hope not to have too much of a rocky road, but there will be a little bit of rockiness as we transition without someone here to directly liaise with them. So then, you know, you, over time, the digital librarian could liaise with the outside company, but they're not going to know what's going on. So that'll that'll be me in the beginning. Um, it's impossible not to be me based on what has to happen in college here. So I will be working closely with Selena and Catherine and Adult Services to make sure all of that works and coordinating all of that. Now, long term, we're going to need to plan for an IT ahead of IT. Like we need someone in here who is an IT person. Um, things are getting more complicated. It, technology is just changing so much. So just to give you an example, Gilderland Library has an IT department for part-timers. So we don't have anybody. So we can outsource, but it's a band-aid um, without an internal person to work on that. So there will be some opportunities as some retirements come up soon that, you know, there's another in the, um, we have a position now that is technical services position. It's a librarian two position. And when that position 
retires the, the circulation and technical services departments will mostly like this can all change with strategic plan but at this point in time we see those departments as moving together as access services so that would put marion in charge of those departments we already have circulation working part-time in the back assisting with technical services so that's a nice a nice collaboration and it will free up some more significant funds to be able to bring in IT and I, my plan is to, to try to get inch along until we get there. We'll see how it goes. Do you, um, you're aware that Upper Hudson lost and Hitler mm -hmm. and they hired someone mm -hmm. and she's starting in another couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Tim was mentioning that they did get a few other applications. Would that be a position? Is that a similar position to here? The thing that I'm thinking is maybe you could ask Tim for if he, if he would maybe feel comfortable in reaching out to those candidates that weren't selected. There's a, there is a position at the East Greenbush Library that's similar in this um, system support associate. That's, that was Ann's position. So I'm not sure if that is here, here you yeah. have a, a group of people who they interviewed and they said, yep, um, they they were great. They had six app, they had interviews with six of the applicants, um, and they brought two people in for our in-person interviews. But the six applicants were, I'm just wondering if there's if, if that would be something you could reach out to say, we're looking for a similar position. Could you share those resumes? And, and I can possibly reach out saying, you've interviewed, you know, you applied for the Upper Hudson. However, we have a position here at our library, which would be interested in hearing about it. So if that position is more IT, I would mm -hmm. say yes. If that position is more like what we're hiring the librarian to do, which is support our e content, you know, do overdrive ordering, mm -hmm. manage our databases. That's what that position was. It was AMS. Yeah, that's what yeah, that AMS position okay. was. It was so she was, you know, processing interlibrary loan and mm -hmm. very library heavy jobs, not IT. Okay. All right. But that's a great idea if it was <laughs> IT. So it, it, it'll be something that we will continue to work towards. That's our, that's our, um, that's our approach right now. We're going to post all these positions. And, and honestly, it's a huge opportunity for somebody to come into this library because these positions do not open very often. I mean, it's, it makes a, the timing is just not fun. But it's it's really a great opportunity because these positions don't often go off open very often for these full-time librarian positions, especially a department position. So it's a great opportunity for somebody. So we'll post it all in. Um, we already have the admin assistant position posted and I'm getting a ton of applications for that. So that will be good. And the, that, uh, that process closes May 1st. Do you expect any internal applicants for the department? Um, anybody's welcome to apply. Just what kind of, yes, I remember when Elizabeth left the prior from there. Yes. Yep. At this time, we're, we, want, we have decided to open it up. Now, there was a time not that long ago was, we made a lot of changes and started that whole library system because mm -hmm. you could not get a part. Yep. And I assume the situation is like the same in the community. It, it, it may happen again. So it, you never know. It's adult services versus youth services. You don't know. So Selena's a library assistant. She will be in that department now. Um, we will. Um, we'll, we'll see. So the changes might be coming, but we're working within our budget to do what we can. There are still, this will still leave us some additional money that's not spent for some of these positions, um, but it's just not enough to bring in an IT person. So we decided to, because we have the outside consultants, we decided to prioritize what the needs were with public service. And it was a really tough decision about sometimes you have to make those decisions. So that's where we are right now with staffing. There's a personnel memo in your yeah. board packet accepting um, 
with regret the resignations. Um, and so we I'm have to be able to that. Can I just Yes, you. So are all of these positions are going to be posted at the same time? Yep. And so are you the one that's going to do the interview with or are you? Um, I will not be part of all of the interviews, but the full timers that will be a part of. It's a it's gonna be a rough few months. A really rough few months. So there, if whatever we can hire out to do, we're going to need to hire out to do. There's going to be a lot of things that um, are just going to go on pause. If it's not critical, it's going to have to be paused. It has to go on. You know, we could we could choose to pause a strategic planning. We can't pause next week's meetings. <laughs> um, but but even though you know for. For the board, that's not going to be a lot, a lot of work for us. That's going to be, we have um, 12 meetings in a six week time period in June, along with the budget, along with all this. So there, there is a lot going on right now. Um, so we're going to do the best we can. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you will say, I mean, because Molly was on the board. Molly was so also lost a key person. We have also lost a key person on the work group. Now, so for in, internal stuff, we have a we have a part time library assistant who works as a school librarian during the school year. She's going to help us out the summer a little bit more. So we you know we're kind of bringing in some additional people. And there's somebody who actually had the position that here is going to who is going to help us out on a substitute basis. So we've got some people that can help us through public service transition. It's, um, it's just going to be a lot of moving parts. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> um, we're all just hands on. We're going to do the best we can and everyone's happy for them. You know, it's not totally unexpected when we have been here for this long. Right. Um, it was just timing was just not ideal, but it happened. So it happens in every place. Yeah. So you deal with it. And you're right. I mean, very rarely do opportunities come along. I would assume you'll have great interest in the director of the services. Oh, yes. Hopefully we will get some of these dynamite. Now the tricky, just the tricky part of that is we are the smaller of the big libraries. So the only libraries that have that same position all pay more than us. So we're not going to get somebody who has that specific management experience. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get them. So unless they're coming in from outside, they, they could come in from outside and move here, mm -hmm. which is possible, or they could be a director at a smaller library, which is you know, would have some equivalent management pieces. So, it, you know, it's going to be a really hard thing for everybody to go through. Especially, especially, for especially for but we're, we are, so we will be, um, we, new services has just been great on the ball, trying to, you know, get some reading situated. And we will be hiring a lot of outside people to do program more programming than in years past, probably. Yeah. We're going to need everybody's help, training, and, and all of the other things that are happening. Do you end up with more volunteers in the summer? Well, the volunteer program is a heavy lift for staff. So it's not a helpful thing. It's a wonderful thing to provide, it is, but it's, it's not a it's a gift to the community. <laughs> it's not the same thing as the friends volunteers who are, you know, truly volunteers. It's a different kind of volunteer. It's so nice. It is great. Right. And yeah, it's great for the kids who do it. And it's also great for the kids who get to work with the kids. Yeah. So yeah. But it always is. We use to. It's more work, important work, but it is, it, it, yeah. yeah, it's true. So any low-hanging fruit will be paused for a while. Any low-hanging fruit, yeah, there's a, it, it will, that's just what we'll be working on. 
<laughs> those the volunteer dates for the I saw in the newsletter that it started talking about the volunteers, but the dates have not been published yet. Okay. Published. okay. Are there any opportunities for shared services with IT like with another library or anything? We're trying to grapple with that at the county. Right. We could we could certainly share with the county. Um <laughs> <laughs> We're looking to share with other people. We're having a hard time recruiting my team. Are you? Oh, yeah. well, maybe we could. Now that you're located so close. Well, yeah. I'm saying I'll something to think do. about. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's any prohibitions of doing that. Or... I mean, it would probably be a shared service agreement. We'd have to come mm -hmm. up with, you know, an intergovernmental shared service mm -hmm. agreement where you come up with who pays, pays what. what. Yeah. Yeah. what. Yeah. But I would certainly be open to discussing that any way that we could make it more affordable. To bring in someone, you know, sometimes IT makes more than I do, so it's it's a heavy lift for us. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a nice transition piece up for you for you to share. Oh, right. that would be wonderful. Yeah, that's around. person, like maybe they can. That's what you're. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of thinking is maybe so. Sharing. Nothing is off the table right yeah. now. Everything's on the table, but I. I heard it's like a great cloning program. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but I, I would like to thank our staff because I think well, I know we're gonna weather this and the community's probably not even gonna notice. And you know, that says a lot about our staff. And, and we'll miss Molly. Yeah, she well the community is gonna miss Molly. Oh for sure. Yeah. And Gary yeah. is less of a known commodity. I mean I will miss Gary. <laughs> Yes, I don't like my right. Like I thought, you know, to me, public really, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, for sure. So, I mean, she, she now, you know, she's on the Kiwanis board representing the library. Like, there's a lot of roles that she undertakes for the library. So that's going to be, yeah. it's, it's going to be tough, but we'll get through it. And I mean, you will, we will bring in some new blood. You know, there are always silver linings. It's hard to see them right now, but but there are opportunities, and there will be changes that have to come, no matter what was strategic planning. So, it, I mean, be good. yeah, that's a good way to. So yeah, so it's okay, and and we will get through it. And our staff have been. You know, I've I've just been listening a lot with what are the needs, trying to piece together what my needs are. What the overall library needs are, and what each individual department needs, you know, the impact that everybody has on the department to kind of put together what our internal plan is. And it's a, you know, it's an internal plan, and we'll see how it goes. I think it's a plan that's not going to lock us in to staff long term that we will need. <laughs> yeah. So that's the what we're trying to do now. Any other questions about my report? I didn't talk about any of the really fun things that are happening at the library, it is in my report. Please read it. There is a lot of, a lot of great things happening. It's just wonderful, I have to say. You know, like, in, it, you just feel like the library is back. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I really think, you know, some of it set the meeting rooms are open, but now when you come in, like, there are people everywhere. So I remember at first, remember how the staff were kind of oh, bummed. I mean, it, it was, was like, all who's in the library. <laughs> but now it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. It's like you drive by and the parking lot's mm -hmm. full every hour of the day. And you come in and there are just people everywhere. And it's so good to see. And I, I would like to compliment also and just say, like, specifically for me, I always look at that popular now section and every single time that I walk in the door, I see a bunch of books that people are talking about that are very relevant that, you know, maybe are being turned into a movie or mm -hmm. just yeah. books that I want to read and I grab them, they're awesome. And I just think first compliment on staying relevant with materials and then also knowing that there's a person who curates that and that's much appreciated. And I think it's it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't pass that along, that has been. Is that hot off the press? Or that is like hot off the press. Yes. Oh, friends, you yeah. supported yes. a nice yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Brand, oh, that's awesome. I want Silver Thunder. Oh, oh, Julianne can report it. They gave us a lot of money tonight. So we are very thankful to the friends. And last month, just to give you an idea of numbers, so we had 24 programs for adults with 367 people. 
school attending. We had 40 programs for children with 2,560 people and nine programs for teens with 67. Still like programs. So that's yeah. the, yeah. the lock in was super cute. It was Logan had a blast. He loved it. Yep. He yeah. had a great time. You see it the whole time. So <laughs> great. Yeah. We will have so we have a we have a new services intern right now. And and she ran that project. And she might she has agreed also that she could do some Sunday meeting could do some Sunday. She's actually a director of a small library. Um but she's getting her library degree, so that's why she's interning here. And we have a library school student who will be interning in the summer um, for adult in adult services. So we, we're going to have a lot of bodies. It's, you know, we're also going to have a lot of training. So be patient with us in terms of, um, I think, just regular projects behind the scenes stuff because there's going to be a lot going on. I think I don't think we're going to skip a beat with the public. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to accept the personnel memo and the regrets, accept the resignations of Molly and Gary. Tammy, second. I know what I mean, Harvard. I know you'll do well, and I think in the long run, sometimes all this new blood. Really is good for an organization. Yes. As, sad, as sad as it is, and as tough as it can be. We'll get through it. Yeah. We'll get there first. Yes. Okay. Any all those in favor of accepting the personnel memo? It's unanimous. Not the cook. Not the cook. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, Okay, old business. Um, well, I, I was kind of writing down the um, firefighter tax exemption. I mean, I'll just give you a quick little overview that in terms of um, ELD and, and really, I don't know what's happening in other libraries, but it doesn't seem to have opened up yet. So we may be kind of early in the curve. So we're still waiting for some information from the town, you know, what would be the impact, what would they estimate the um, assessed value would be for eligible individuals. And I reached out to Bob and just told him we have a lot going on, we wouldn't be doing, because he doesn't need an answer till March. I said, we aren't going to even put it on our agenda until September. So he knows that. Um, that there was plenty of time to hear back from the town. Yes, yeah, so we probably reached out to the town. Um, we've been in communication, but we don't have a strategic planning. I mean, we all are. And the only other thing was the MOU, but um, friends did approve um, uh, the use side of it. So, so I think I don't think there's anything that needs a motion. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. But I thought, okay. Yes. yes. That was under the business, but this was under old business. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, so now we'll go to the friend, the liaison. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have any questions. Old business. Uh, Leanne. Okay, so nothing going on to friend board. It's <laughs> <laughs> really sad. Um, so you're in book sale. Yes, you have. So we'll be starting our setup tomorrow. Um, taking to the library for the next few days. Um, People are looking forward to it. I think we'll have a, you know, a good sale. We have a great team of volunteers. Um, really excited the way that people signed up this year. It's been interesting to see a lot more. So wonderful. Um, we have made men who are coming to do their Veterans Association affiliate event. Um, they're going to be on our ribbon, which is money. Um, and we have everybody. We have Shay, we have Charlie. We're moving out fast. Um, so we will be, we'll have rooms cleared Monday, or I'm sorry, Sunday before we leave. Um, we are selling everything for a dollar, which is an increase of these small mass market paperbacks. They used to be 50 cents, now they're a dollar, so we're kind of curious what um, patrons will think. We did kick around making $2 hardcovers, which is what it used to be back before the pandemic. Um, but we got such mixed reviews from our own people, our own sorters, that we didn't want to, if you're in the middle of a strategic plan, we're not going to rock the boat and raise mm -hmm. money there. So. 
right now we're just raising the, the lowest price item is now a dollar. So everything is a dollar. Um, but we are going to start using the book house. We're going to do a special collection. It'll be $5 hardcover books that are new, 2021 or newer, hardcover only. Um, and then anything that we, that we considered was unique, special, or worth a whole lot more than a dollar. So like the Gilmore Girls, we have their entire DVD season, um, The Office, we have like a six set season, whatever. So those will be for $5 as well. And that will follow the book sale. So it will be intermingled with the book sale, but when we come back in, that will be out there. And then that will get followed by the bee trees. So we kind of have our next couple of features lined up. And the puzzles, I guess, will be coming back on popular demand because people really like the puzzles. So uh, that's what we're doing there. We did just approve uh, a whole slew of grants from um, the library itself. So that was the summer reading program. We did the digital literacy program. Um, a travel kit for the staff to go around to other functions, a MacBook Air, Chromebooks, museum passes, and the auto press collections. So those will all be funded by the friends. Um, a lot of those were annual funding that we do. So we still have a surplus after that. Um, so I will use my closing program. Um, so that's where we are. We did agree to do the MOU. Um, and we have a new eBay team that will be um, reaching out to the apply through some emails starting to come out. We're looking for people to help us research some more expensive books, the high quality books that are the first editions. We have sold several on eBay. I think the most we've sold is $100. We get these rare findings that come in, and so we're looking for a better team of people who are willing to research. So we'll be doing that. And we are really looking for a vice president. So if you know of anybody that we could start to recruit, we have no succession plan right now because you've all done it. You've already been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we really look for somebody to replace me come November. So maybe we can recruit through the planning process with them when we're talking to them. Mm -hmm. We might be able to identify somebody. People seem to be really interested in membership. That's whenever I put it out, I get tons of emails back on that and everything else is crickets. Especially the book sale chair. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. You're an unpaid staff member. <laughs> um, so that's all I have from the friends. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. And you did handle, uh, I was at the meeting. It was just uh, really heartwarming to see all the new faces. Mm -hmm. There were three people there that were their first visit and uh, there was talk about appointing them but somehow nothing well you see i already got them the sort of see when i yeah. see people yeah. never there yeah. i get them in there yeah. Yeah. Of time and they try to do the other side well, that's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> okay well we don't have anyone from east greenbush tonight so i guess we'll head over to you tom brief report just dmv's fully operational fully staffed fully stacked including the uh Real ID, enhanced licensing, they've got it all. So Good. get over there when you can. It's like five days a week. Nice. Wonderful. Thank you. Hey, Anne, I have a couple of things. Um, let's see. So I we had our board meeting this past week and or last week, and um, I was appointed the nominee committee chair. Um, because there is one position on the um, on the Upper Hudson Board, um, Antonio is not eligible for re-election because he served the two terms. So he is Albany midsize, which is Cohoes, uh, Ravina, Queemans, Selkirk, Morrisville, and Laura Lee. So um, someone has to come out of that area to replace Antonio. So um, the other uh, trustees uh, that were up, um, Evelyn, Jackie, and Fred, all agreed to um, you know, go on for another five years. So um, Tim, uh, the director, he sent out an email to the directors of these libraries asking if they um, you know, with anyone, or you know, just getting the word out to you know, looking for a new trustee. Um, okay, so that was that. And then 
it comes to me like it's silly. It's like a silly thing. It's not like a uh, then I'll make, um, I'll make the announcement at the um, annual meeting, which is June 14th. Um, and there are location to be determined, but if anyone wants to go, it should be a nice night, like heavy hors d'oeuvres, and um, they're trying to get a speaker. Um, so they're looking at um, at Sparn or, um, oh my gosh, there's another place in Troy. And I forget that I forget where they were looking. Um, Rev Hall. Oh, okay. Sure. So those locations, um, they said were very receptive. It's, it is a Wednesday night. That's probably why you know they have availability. But um, it's June fourteenth. Um, they had an Upper Hudson spelling bee, which was well attended by the group that knew about it. I mean, I think I remember hearing about it, but it wasn't like really publicized, I don't know. But anyway, the, um, the, the finale is April 30th, and I'm not sure of the location. I thought they said colony, I was just writing quickly. I, it might be a colony, um, if anyone's interested. They, you know. Um, in being in it? No, 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 in, <laughs> in going to it, going to it. Um, so it's the final. It's the final, song. yes. So Joe Burke, who is the, in the director's group. Um, he's the director. He's the announcer. And he, he said it, it's hard to be an announcer at a spelling bee. Like you have to, like it's, it's called something, like pronounce something. You have to pronounce the word, use it in a sentence, um, give the definition. Like you have all these things to do. And he said it's really hard. You think like, oh, you know, say the word blah blah blah, and but no, you have to say it perfectly. And he said it's hard. And he says I've never heard, you know, some of these words. Heard from anyway, um, but he was great. He was his report. It was very uh, animated. Um, speaking of the expedition, um, every when all is said and done, um, they had. They, whoever, you know, professor will have spent ten thousand dollars for this. I don't know if that's how far. I have no idea. But um, they're really proud of it, and um, we, as a board of Hudson, had made um, kind of a commitment to at least do six libraries that you haven't been to, and um, just kind of when you get there. Just say like who you are, and just talk to someone like, oh, what you know? Why do you like working here? And what's so special about what's special? Not what's so what what's special about your library? Tell me something about your library, um, just to you know maybe report back, report it back. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing is, I thought this we all thought this was interesting. The automation advisory committee sent out a one question survey to about sixty thousand patrons randomly selected whose cards are either current or expired within the past three years. They received 5,500 responses. The quote, I thought was great. I'm the chair of that committee. Yeah. <laughs> the question was, how do you use your library? In the building only, digital content only, both or neither, like I don't use the library. And um, the highest one was both um, in the library and digital. That was 55%. Um, in the building was 27%. Digital content, 14 And I don't use the library, only 3%. So I, we, we all thought that was interesting, like just this random survey and just, you know. So how are, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying like both. I we were getting it. Yeah, I think I saw that one too. Yeah. You want to know how we're using that? Yeah. Why we're doing it? Yeah. Yeah. So well, interesting part of strategic planning too. But it's yeah. not part of strategic planning. It's part of the Automation Advisory Council where we are working on online card registrations, and we're trying to decide. We're we're changing the process, and what we're trying to decide is. Is our goal to simplify the process? So it or is our goal to enhance the process? 
So if you are, if we thought if we were getting people who are just using the library online, then we need to enhance that process because it's not, that is their library experience. So we need to give them, you know, we need to talk about all the library resources and find a way to pull them in to everything else through that process. But if it's, people are using the library in both spaces or, or just in person, then we don't need to, you know, it's much less work to, to just simplify the process so that you don't have to do so many steps in here. So these are the kinds of things that that committee does. It's, um, it's projects that are, that span all the libraries that we have to work collaboratively together. Um, like so we do long roles. Roll, so, yeah. so do you consider 14%? We haven't we haven't met to talk about it yet, so, so um, I'm not going to give you any feedback because it's just not it's mm -hmm. made it's with that information. But that's what we're using it for. Um, that's one of those really important committees, but it's also kind of low hanging fruit. Somebody is else can step into the place. You know, every meeting I. I it's kind of a joke, running joke on my committee. Every meeting has to go, anybody would like to chair this meeting. It's a one hour meeting, and that's what it is. We're like, okay, it starts. I've already got somebody, uh, another tenter on my tangent, but I already have a, someone else on the committee who is setting up the agenda. We set the agenda at the end of each meeting. They do the reminders for the agenda. We rotate the minutes. It's such an easy thing, but I, at some point, need to come off that committee. It's really good for us to be on that committee. Um, but it's time to pass the baton. And so there are directors that are rep most directors, but I, I, there are a few positions that are not directors that are at large. So I have to get someone in our library mm -hmm. to jump in, which would be really good. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. okay under new business, I have two items. Um, first of all, the board that we will accept a motion to authorize Jill to close the library for one day if necessary for the installation of the back, back the back flow prevention prevention device. Have that, Mary? Anybody want to make that motion? Charlie is he's head of the facilities committee. Okay. okay. Uh, second, yeah. okay. Any questions? You keep us posted. I will. For sure. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, unanimously passes. Okay, the second one, um, a couple for me. So, uh, we said that we would start doing Jill's performance evaluation mid year. That's in your contract now that it's coming here. So um, I had hoped to get it done today, but it's not. It's in the drafting process. Um, so maybe by the time we have our May committee meetings, I'll have something. So basically, it will be a form. Every trustee is asked to independently complete it. This year, we are also going to ask the department head, which is ironic because now by the time the you might want to do it fast. And then there will be this year for the first time, I think, a trustee self evaluation. So that's what they said in our meeting tonight. I know should have that. Yes. Yeah. So I've got drafts of all three circulating around. So in the next month, my goal is that you'll get them, you'll have a couple of weeks to fill them out, and then we'll talk about them at a following meeting, in executive session, the board will, uh, once the board approves, approves that, it will be shared with Joe, but I'll be there and not with Joe. And tell us, staff, Questions about it? I think that's everything for today. I would accept a motion to adjourn. 